Thanks for tuning in to A Better World, where we aim to illustrate that today is the greatest time to be alive and also showing the progress we're making as a civilization. I'm your host, Luis Acevedo. And in today's episode, we're going to be going over an article that I read from Think Progress, and it is titled, Senator Elizabeth Warren has an ambitious plan to upend the lobbying industry. Now, I want to address a couple things before we actually get into the article itself. The first thing I want to address is that in no way do I like Senator Warren, nor do I support her. Um, I actually have very different political views than she does, but I just think it's important to show that you can like somebody's idea without necessarily liking them or supporting them. And I feel that we forget that in today's world. It's almost as if if you support somebody, I mean, if you like their idea, but then you're automatically, then people automatically assume that you're supporting them. So if you like somebody, people assume that you support them, when that isn't the case at all, at least not sometimes. So that's the first thing that I would like to address. The second thing I'd like to address before we get into the article is the lobbying industry itself. Give you guys a little background on it, some pros and cons, so that way we can be completely honest as we observe uh, her proposal later on. So in 2013, it was reported that the lobbying industry raked in $3.2 billion, that's with a B, billion dollars. They made billions of dollars from essentially persuading lawmakers, people that represent you and I, to either vote in their favor or write laws in their favor and regulations. And in some cases, the lobbying groups write their own laws and regulations. Yeah, let that sink in for a minute. That's pretty crazy. However... There are some benefits to lobbying. So one of the biggest things that it does is it helps give people like you and I, when it's a good lobbying group, such as there's lobbying groups for poverty relief and um, aid prevention. So in groups like that, it helps people like you and I have a bigger voice because uh, collectivism, you know, and the government has no choice but to hear you at that point when you have a bunch of people all standing for the same thing and becoming involved in politics. So that's another bonus, actually, is that it helps people get politically active. And it does that by having marches, uh, petitions, and even protests. And something that can be considered a pro, but also a con, depending on who's coming up with it. And your opinion is uh, they can come up with new solutions to old problems. Um, so that can, like I said, that can be a good thing. It can also be a bad thing. Now, in my opinion, the cons far outweigh the pros, um, but I'll let you guys decide for yourself. So one of the cons is something I've already stated is that they can write their own laws and regulations. Um, and another thing is that in 2008 from 2010, 30 different corporations spent $476 million in lobbying activities. So they spent almost a half a billion dollars in lobbying our Congress. And in return, they got $11 billion in tax rebates. That's one hell of an investment. One hell of an investment. And I think it goes without saying that they can buy politicians. And actually, just to give you guys an idea of what that actually looks like, I want to show you a clip or, at, well, I can't show the people who are watching this, um, but everybody will be able to hear it. So give me a second here as I work to pull this up. I think this is pretty important. Um, yeah, and just to give you a little background, this is, um, I believe, um, Give me a revolving door, second. and it works like this. When we become okay, so this is Jack Abramoff. He's a former lobbyist, and he was actually convicted of, um, I believe, three felony charges: tax evasion, bribing politicians, and 
There was one other thing. I believe it may have been corruption. But listen to what he has to say when, well, about buying politicians. I'm friendly with an office and they were important to us. Uh, I would say, or my staff would say to him or her at some point, you know, when you're done working on the Hill, we'd very much like you to consider coming to work for us. Now, the moment I said that to them, that was it. We owned them. And what does that mean? Every request from our office, every request of our clients, everything that we want, they're going to do. Yeah, just... Yeah, you heard that. That is um, pretty scary that some of these people have that much control over people who are supposed to represent you and I. However, this is where Elizabeth Senator Warren's plan comes into play and I believe can be extremely beneficial. So the proposal is called Anti-Corruption and Public Integrity Act. And one of the things that it aims to do is end the revolving door. So essentially what you just heard from this former lobbyist is saying, oh, why, why don't you come work for us? That will be no more. Uh, con any elected or appointed official will not be able to become a lobbyist. So that's really good. I think that right there will help gain some trust, not only in our politicians, but in corporations and the free market of itself. Also, another thing that it plans to do is strengthen existing anti-corruption laws. So that's good to help strengthen what we already have set in place and to reinforce them. Um, so that way we can end some of this corruption and uh, deals that are taking place in a smoke-filled room behind closed doors that you and I have no clue what's going on, but hey, they get to dictate our lives. In a way, I know we're a free country, but laws really do hinder what we can and can't do and do imprint and, and infringe on our freedoms. Um, anyway, so, and I think it's important to note that over about half of all congressmen go into lobbying after they retire. So hopefully if this gets passed, that'll end and we can keep some of that integrity in our um, politicians uh, in particular since they're representing us and I think that's important to do. And another thing that I really like about this bill is the fact that it aims to ban Americans for lobbying on behalf of foreign governments to our Congress. So to make it really simple, that basically means that people are getting paid from foreign governments to push their agendas on our Congress. So foreign governments can manipulate our laws through lobbyists by hiring American lobbyists. That to me is sickening. And this goal, I mean this plan, ends to aim that. Another thing it aims to do is raise the Capitol Hill staffer pay. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, why would you raise their pay? Their pay, you know, they get paid really well. Well, they actually don't. You know, they're congressmen, the senators, they get paid well. They get paid in the six figures. Uh, a lot of their staffers, from the research I did, looks like they get paid anywhere from thirty six to forty eight thousand dollars a year and so when you're working in a for a powerful person like a congressman or a congresswoman or a senator you're going to be around a lot of these lobbyists and these lobbyists can offer these staffers a lot more money to go work for them because they have the experience to know the inside workings of our Congress so they can probably better negotiate deals on behalf of the interest group. Not only that, but it entices them to do so because they're going to get paid a lot more. I mean, there's cases where co uh, congressmen and congresswomen are going into lobbying and making about 1,400% more than they were when they were an elected official. So I assume, I don't know, but I assume the pay raise increases drastically for Capitol, uh, for Capitol Hill staffers as well once they go over to lobbying. So if we raise their pay, then we take away that incentive to go lobby for Congress rather than work with Congress. Now, obviously, we should let people do what they want to do. But I think that this would also help, once again, end some of the corruption and end some of the mistrust that we have in our government and private industries. 
And another thing that I really, really like about this is that it aims to be completely transparent with all the documents that will be exchanged between lobbyists and government officials. So all of that will be public record so that way you and I can see exactly what's going on behind those closed doors that we couldn't see before. And another thing that it wants to do is end stock trading, which I think is a beautiful idea, which also takes away the incentive for politicians to listen to the lobbying groups as opposed to the people who they're supposed to represent. And two last things about this bill that I think are really good is it plans to end um, corporations having influence or actually writing laws and regulations themselves. So as we talked about earlier, they have the power to do that now, but this proposal aims to end that, which is really, really good. And then it says um, also to make basically the financial and tax history of all elected officials public record, which I think is awesome because then you'll know if that public official, elected official, is being bought, is in somebody's pocket. And if they are, and if we catch that, we can make sure that they are no longer in that position of power because we know that that particular person will not be serving in the best interest of the people, but in the interest of the interest group, the lobbying group in which they're representing or which has them in their back pocket. So... I really like this proposal. I've read that a lot of people don't think it'll go anywhere. I've read that people think that this is just a stunt for her to run for office in 2020, even though she says that she will not run in 2020. Um, but I do think it is a beautiful idea, and I think it's a step in the right direction. And I know that this hasn't really illustrated anything that has occurred and has improved, but what this does illustrate is the fact that at least we have some people in elective office who are working to do the right thing and help bring more power to the people. And once again, it is very important to note that you can like somebody's idea without supporting them. And that's the same way I feel about Elizabeth Warren. And so I think she has a really good plan here. I definitely support this plan from my knowledge of it. And I thought this would be something very interesting to share with you guys and to let you know that whether you're right or left, there's people on both sides of the aisle who are working in the best interest of the people. And I think this plan right here, this proposal, is definitely working towards the best interest of the people. And so I really like it, and I hope it goes somewhere, and I hope we can actually um, make this a law. And I hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode. Um, if, I hope you guys learned something out of it. And as always, if you enjoyed what you saw, please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And if you guys have any suggestions, please give me feedback and let me know if there's something in particular that you want me to cover or if there's something that you see I can do better. So thank you guys and have a great day.